we start now? So, we have done Vedic literature, correct? We started the timeline with Vedic literature, we did Indus Valley Civilization, correct? So, who was the person who discovered Indus Valley Civilization? Sir John Marshall. Next, after Sir John Marshall, we have seen uh, who discovered Harappa? Dayara Sahani. Who discovered Mohanjadaro? R.D. Banerjee. Next, uh, after that we have seen some important, which city is called as city of dead? Mohanjadaro. Next, uh, which, uh, which of the two important cities known for its ports? Lothal and Lodavaria. In which state it is? Gujarat. Okay, next, after that, what we have seen in this very civilization, different town planning etc. Right? Okay, then after that we have seen uh, there was an Alexander invasion, correct? So, tell me, battle of Hidensis was fought between which two kings? Alexander and Horus. Okay, so it was fought on which river? River Jhelum. What are the other names of River Jhelum? Vitasta and Hidensis. Vitasta and Hidensis. When Alexander left India, he appointed some governors. Can you tell me the name of those governors? Darius Nicator and Seleucus Nicator. Okay, after that, uh, we have seen about, there was a king who surrendered to Alexander forces. Ambi, who was that? Ambi. Next, after that, we have seen, uh, what else we have seen? Who is the founder of the Mauryan Empire? Chandragupta Maurya. Chandragupta's uh, son is Bindusara. Bindusara's son is Ashoka. Okay. Chandragupta changed to Jainist religion because of a monk. Who is that monk? Badra Bahu. Okay. Next. Ashoka changed himself to Buddhism because of a monk. Who is that monk? Yeah? Upagupta. Correct. Chandragupta came down south here in Karnataka in a place dash. What is that place? Place. Shravana Belagula. Shravana Belagula and uh, which is the India's tallest monolithic statue? Gomateshwar. Okay, Gomateshwar. What is the statue's name? Bahubali. Okay, next. After that we have seen uh, Ashoka's inscription. Who discovered Ashoka's inscription? Sir James? Sir James Princer. Okay, then after that rock edicts. How many rock edicts we have? 13 major rocket hits. Okay. After that, we have seen uh, rocket hits is done. Um, then we have seen about home here. Next. 13th rock hit mentions Kalinga War. Okay, I will give 14 or 13? 13. Okay. Maybe a confusion in number, I will just check it. Take it. Next, uh, we have seen about Buddhism. Who is the father of Gautam Buddha or Siddhartha? It's taking so much time. Uh, Suddhodana. Hmm. Next. Mother. Maya. Mother Maya. And uh, what is the wife name of the, this guy? Siddhartha. Gautami Yashoda. Kya ho gaya? Mismatch. Mismatch kar sakte hai, but itna bhi bura nahi. Thik hai? Fine. Okay. So, who is son of uh, Siddhartha? Rahul. Rahul. Okay. Next. Who gave four noble truth? Gautam Buddha. Okay, who gave four, uh, eight noble paths or Ashtanga paths? Gautam Buddha. Okay. So I told you that the previous birth which Buddha was able to imagine, it is mentioned in a book. What is that book? Jataka tales. Which language Buddha speak? He spoke in Pali language. Okay. Where was Buddha born? Lumini. Where he got enlightenment? Bodhi tree. tree. Which place? Gaya. Yeah. Where it is? Bihar. Yeah. You know, OTA is also there. Officer yeah. Training Academy. Maybe I think it's not functioning now. They have stopped functioning. But OTA now it is in Chennai. Chennai. Two places. Okay, next. Uh, where did Buddha die? Buddha died in Kushinagar. If it is not there, you just write it down. Buddha died in Kushinagar. Next. The day when Buddha gave his first sermon is also known as Dharma Chakra Pravartana. Dharma Chakra Pravartana. Next, uh, the day when Buddha died is also known as Mahapari Nirvana. What is that? Mahapari Nirvana. Okay, fine. 
So these are the things we have seen. Buddhism. Who is Buddha's teacher? Who is Buddha's teacher? Adara Kalma. Okay. What is what the name of Buddha's horse? Okay. See, See they are asking this kind of question. Okay, so get prepared. Next. So, Adara Kalma gave training. He did meditation and he uh, got an enlightenment. So, this is something basic that you should know. But I told you in uh, examination, they will ask you why he started a new religion. Why Buddhism was going parallel to Jainism? What happened to Hinduism? Then who is Gupta people, Sri Guptas? Okay, then what happens with the uh, other, uh, you know, religions, Ajivikas and all? Fine. So, let us try to understand what, what is your Vedic literature. So, write down heading, Vedic literature. Written? Okay. So, here I told you there is a confusion whether Indus Valley civilization was before Vedic literature or Vedic literature was, uh, Vedic time was before Indus Valley. So, there is a confusion, but we have to, you know, move forward, um, avoiding all this confusion. So, let us try to understand. Vedic literature, it talk, talks about gods, okay, some uh, powers, mythical powers or something like that. So, we have four Vedas. So, what are these four Vedas? Rig Veda, Samaveda, Samaveda, Yajur Veda and Atharva Veda. Is there any other Veda? Vikram Veda, anything like that? No. Okay, it's a movie, don't get confused. Okay, next. Sometimes in exam they will ask you which book is also considered as fifth Veda. Answer is Tirukural. What is that? Tirukural. Okay. So, here we have four Vedas. You have Rig Veda, then Samaveda, then you have Yajur Veda and then Atharva Veda. Which is the oldest Veda? Answer is Rig Veda. How many chapters are here? We have total 10 chapters. In this 10 chapters, the chapter number 1 and the chapter number 10 was added in the later stage. Initially, we had chapters from 9, uh, second to 9. Okay. Now, what is this book all about? What do they mention? They all mention about, uh, you can say, some powers of God. Ultimately, the goal is moral, moral values. Okay, ultimately, the goal is moral values. So, now, in this Rig Vedas, all these Vedas, they have used the language, that is, which language here? Sanskrit language. Sanskrit language is used in all the Vedic literature. Okay, so, let us try to understand now here. Now, who are these Vedic people? Where they were? Okay, we don't have any idea, but just try to understand the literatures here. Okay, Vedic literatures. Now, now here you have some books called as Upanishad. Okay, Upanishad. Upa means to sit. Upahar. Have you heard something called as Upahar? What is Upahar? Har means what? Har. Har means? There are many meanings. One har is the mala or you can say the garland. The other har is food. Okay, but that other har if I use ahara, then it becomes a food. Okay. Now ahara means food. Suppose if I say upa ahara, okay, upa means to sit. Okay, sit and eat. That's why many hotels in Karnataka and other states will have udupi upa ahara. What is that? If upa ahara is not there, that means you have to stand and eat. Okay. Maybe opposite is there. Then okay. Huh. So that's why first it was Udupi Upahar, now they have changed to Krishna Vej. Correct. So there is no Upahar, you stand and eat. Fine. So look at this. Upa means to sit, Nishad. Okay, Nishad means to listen. Okay, so what happens here? Those days, children used to go to Guru in jungles, in forest. Okay, and that jungle we call it as Aranya. What is that? Aranya means forest. In the Hindu, Australian language or you can say the North Indian languages including Marathi, Hindi, Sanskrit, Aranya means forest. Okay. So here Aranyakas that means the books which were uh, mentioned in the forest by the teachers. Now 
this teachers will be in forest there will be a guru okay here they will uh, have a hostel kind of thing and students will come and join and they will get knowledge but those days knowledge was something different these days knowledge is all about science you have physics chemistry maths biology computer science we go to a school or college to study these subjects that is the present knowledge but those days the knowledge was something different okay they used to talk about the uh, you know uh, mantras okay for example how to do a yagna what is in my yagna yes how to do a puja or how to uh, connect yourself to god so there were many shlokas okay there were many shlokas so this was the message uh, teaching them one beautiful thing is that this teacher will never have book in front of him okay he will never have book in front of him and the students will not write in their notebook they don't have any books and so on every morning they will get up they will go and say sit teacher will come and they will start okay and whatever he says they should repeat it they will repeat it all students will start repeating it like this rigveda samaveda yajurveda atharvaveda upanishad there are more than 108 upanishad mundaka upanishad is one part here arandakas everything is by hearted by all these students it has been by hearted by all these students here and they remember for the whole life they never do any any error okay any error so this was the uh, knowledge word of mouth it was going there was no online classes there is no video no audio no podcast anything everything was done like this this is one marvelous thing the other beautiful thing is that imagine if i draw india here okay if i draw india here imagine you are in uh, west bengal in darjeeling you go to a brahmin's house in west bengal in darjeeling and you go to a, a kanyakumari and there there is a brahmin you go and ask them to tell some sanskrit shlokas they will tell the same word same uh, you know pronunciation everything will be same so this is what is one beautiful thing always remember every 400 kilometers every 400 kilometers the language patterns will change okay we try to speak in a different language for example here in tamil nadu if you go in chennai people speak tamil but in different way you cross come towards madurai people speak in different way you go to coimbatore 300 kilometers they speak in different way they speak tamil but the slang changes dialect changes so then this called as what dialects correct dialects so in world if you see english the english people they will speak differently the americans they will speak differently why because the dialect changes but here in sanskrit it is not like that the sanskrit language it is a kind of a language you go to any part of the world in india or anywhere the pronunciation is same the words are same no extra no cutting no fitting everything is no the same so this is what one marvelous thing the western countries are shocked to they wonder ki how come this is possible here in india so word of mouth everything was going on fine so now let us try to understand hinduism okay now tell me some gods in hinduism shiva next shiva hanuman next krishna next durga next durga kali next हाँ इसी में आएगा ओके नेक्स्ट बस इतना ही है गणेशा ओके नेक्स्ट विष्णु नेक्स्ट लक्ष्मी ओके नेक्स्ट ब्रह्मा नेक्स्ट दैट्स इट ब्रह्मा विष्णु महेश ओके फाइन ओके देर आर मेनी गॉड्स ओके देर आर मेनी गॉड्स या Indra is there. Okay, so many gods are there. Fine. Venkateshwara, Tirupati, TTD. How many have you gone to Tirupati? Dekha hai? Tirupati is here itself. Tirupati is here. Okay. Kali, Kali, no tete Kali is there. Okay, fine. Tirupati, how many have you gone? Many of you have gone. My question is, those who know, raise your hand. Okay, let me see. Those who know, raise your hand. Question up in the clear. Okay. Okay. Now, if you go to a Shiva temple, they do pala bhishek. That you know, they, with the milk and honey and all these things, they will do puja. Okay. With turmeric and all these things. 
But have you ever seen uh, like this kind of thing happening in Tirupati? Do they do it? 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 करते हैं तो क्यों करते हैं नहीं करते तो क्यों नहीं करते पूरी रात ये और हिंदू शो दे क्लोज द डोर यस हु इज द रिचेस्ट गॉड इन अकॉर्डिंग टू हिंदूइज्म सेना प्रश्न एक मिनट एक मिनट समझ लो Okay, look here, look here. Narasimha, okay, why he has such me? Okay. Fine, we'll see this one by the way. Okay. Hmm. See, now here, uh, we have so many gods. Okay, Tirupati, they have a different, uh, you know, uh, way of praying. Then if you have gone to Iskorn, have you gone to Iskorn? Iskorn, me konsa bhagwan? Krishna. Okay, so... Krishna, if you go to Iskon, they don't do any yagna and all. They don't fire and they don't burn, something like that. But if you have seen some other uh, home, like for example, Ganesh, uh, you know, uh, housewarming ceremony or something, they will do yagna, you know, bricks and all. Have you seen it? Full smoke will be coming out. Okay, all these things. So, why some god do that? Why some god don't do that? Okay. Why there is temple for some gods? Why there is no temple for some other gods? For example, in Hinduism, we consider three guys. The first one is Brahma. Brahma. Next is Vishnu. Next is Mahesh. Tell me who is supreme? Who is supreme? The Brahma is creator. He will create. Okay. Last class I have told you some yugas, Treta yugas, okay, Kali yugas, Dwapara yugas. I have told you. Okay. Vishnu is the protector and Mahesh is the person who will punish you. Yes. Destroy. Yes. Okay. Who is supreme according to you? Mahesh. Okay. Mahesh raise your hand. Okay. Vishnu raise your hand. Brahma. Okay. We have only one Brahma. Okay. We will ask question to him. Uh, do you have any temple for Brahma in Gorit or India or any in Karnataka? Yeah. Raise your hand. Jisko malum hai, raise your hand. Don't cut this. Yeah? Kidhar hai? Ek hai, sir. Pata nahi. Hai, pata nahi. Hai, sir. Ek hai. Two double days nahi kya, sir. Okay. Look here. We'll, we'll clear this doubt. Jidhar dekho sab loo. Okay, look here. Look here. We'll clear this doubt. Brahma, the white race. Saraswati. Vishnu. Lakshmi and Mahesh Parvati. So in India you go to any part, any temple, Hindu temple, okay, maximum the god will be Vishnu or Mahesh. Now in Orissa there is a temple called as Jagannath Puri. Correct, Jagannath Puri. So Jagannath Puri temple if you go, people from south, okay, they will have wish. Okay, now Sagar Dikulla, at least once we have to go to Kasi. Okay, what is that? Uh, Kashi and all that places, no? Uh, yes. How many of you have gone to Kashi? How many of you wish to go there to Kashi? Yeah? Okay. How, uh, when when, when you are planning to go to Kashi? After exam. After exam. Okay. Bal Balram is telling after exam. Okay, listen here. Listen here. Varanasi, Kashi and all these places, there is a rule in Hinduism, so try to understand that rule and then go. So, Balram is telling, he will go after the exam. Let me see whether he is right or wrong. The first rule... At least once in lifetime, we see the class being Hindu, at least one time we see... You have to visit. Like in Islam, you have to visit Mecca, Madina. Okay, like in Christianity, you have Belangani. Okay, Belangani or churches, Bethlehem or Jerusalem, all these things. Fine. So look at this, the first rule here, the person who visits Kashi, the rule is they should not return back to their home. Do you understand? <laughs> they should not return back to their home. Okay, why? Listen here, first I'll tell you, first you understand pura thing, so uh, samjo, uh, no, listen to it, then you tell. 
The rule is, see, in Hinduism you see so many gods. If you see the story of each and every god, we know how they were born, but we don't know how they were, they died. So the rule is, you know, olden days, in ancient uh, time in India, if a man is getting older, he will give all the responsibility to his son or daughter and he will go inside a forest. And he will be living his life inside forest and he will die inside forest. Now how he died, nobody knows. How he died, nobody knows. So like that, now in this Varanasi and Kashi, these places, Ganga, Yamuna, there is Sangam, three rivers they come. So that that is considered as a holy place. Okay, so now what happens, if you die there, you will go and attend heaven. So that's the reason, the day when you decide to go to Kashi, that means you have decided to shed away all your responsibility. Okay, like that. So maybe, now maybe Bharat thinks that exam result for this sir. Yeah, it depends on exam result, yeah. If we say that it depends on exam result, if I pass, I will not go. But if I fail, definitely I will go. Okay, I will not come back. Okay, maybe that is the thing. Okay, fine, look at this. Brahma is the creator, Vishnu is the protector, Mahesh is the thing now. Here we have a god called us, Ram. Correct? But who is this Ram? Where will I fit him? Here, here, here or center where? Vishnu. Okay, so like that we have how many avatars for Vishnu? Yeah, we have 10 avatars. How many avatars we have? 10. Now there is a question. Now, the South Indian students, those who have lived in North India, maybe you have come across this situation. The North Indian students, friends, your friends will ask you a question. Ki, why you are putting tikka like this every time? Chandan, you know, that uh, sandal, why you put like this? Have you asked it? Some North Indian look. South Indians, they will get up every day. They will take ash, they will put like this. Okay. This is the minimum. Neatly, beautifully, they will put one, uh, one centimeter something to look attractive. Okay, something like that. If you go down south, things are very serious. Okay, they will go to a temple full hand, they will put immerse in a ash. I had a student here. Look here. I had a student here, a very hefty guy from Coimbatore. Very hefty guy, strong built up. Okay, so he told sir, I want to join army. Very intelligent, mass ability. He took admission, I was happy, fine. I, finally, I got a student who will get into army. Okay, but uh, the first day when he came to class, he straightly went to that Ayapa temple. Okay, and while coming, then I started class, he came, I was shocked. You know, the ashes completely was in his head like this. Okay, and he sat in this class. Now, why I am telling you this? Because you are trying armed forces. You are trying which forces? Armed uh -huh. forces. There you will not get liberty to put ashes, tattoos, kadas. If you are a minority, then you get a chance. If you belong to Sikh, then you are able to put a beard, beard or karas or something like that. You understand? You are a Hindu, you are a Muslim, you are not allowed. Muslims are not allowed to keep beard. beard. You know that? Yes, you know that? Right? Next, chain. Imagine you love Jesus. So you have a cross, Jesus cross. Okay, so every time you kiss that cross and you go for exam, it is not allowed in army because army, navy, air force is completely different. So if you have this habit of putting all this tikka, this and that, it's very difficult. That's the reason I'm telling you, try to put yourself into NCC. NCC will train you, they will remove everything. Whatever you like, they will remove it. For example, I like ring, remove it. I like watch, remove it. I like fancy dress, torn jeans. Okay, if you like torn jeans, they will give you a pant fully covering. Always remember, Army, Navy, Air Force, you have to cover your from this neck. Only eyes will be visible. Commando they have. Marcos they have. Uh, they will only eyes are open. Rest everything is covered. Okay, like that. So unfortunately today it is open. totally opposite. Out in the city here, if you go to empty road and all, don't know from where uh, this thing is come. Okay, girls have been told in a wrong manner. From childhood, they have been born and brought up in a wrong manner. Okay, kya hota hai ki? Let you go out there, wow, you are so beautiful. Now girl is thinking, why I am beautiful? Because I am wearing jeans. Okay. Then after some time, the girls decide to reduce their cloth, miniskirt pen. Wow, so beautiful. Like all people are, you know, uh, praising her. Like, comment, share. She is getting so many friends. Okay, so she thinks she is beautiful. That's not beautiful. Exposing skin and uh, coming out as an actor or actress, that's not beautiful. Beautiful is something else. Imagine, today you are here and uh, you got a news from your grand, uh, like uh, father, that grandmother has come in home and she is preparing something. What will you do? Mother ka khana acha lagta hai, grandmother ka khana acha lagta hai. Kyu? Mother hai na? You understood? So that is that beauty. 
beauty cannot be seen okay so that that is one wrong way that you know the girls have been taught the problem starts from here what is this barbie doll what is the color of barbie doll pink yeah white or you can say pink is there any barbie doll black in color Is there? It is there. Have you played? I am asking. Have you played with that? Yes. Okay. Next. This part we don't know is slim or fat. Why? Okay. Let me tell you. There is a marketing strategy as fit as fit. What is the meaning of as fit as fit? Strong and healthy. So imagine a girl child takes a Barbie doll in her hand. And she looks at that Barbie doll. Oh, Barbie doll is white in color. So she is doing makeup, eyebrows, lipstick, this and that. She also thinks that I should look like Barbie doll. Then she thinks Barbie doll is very slim. She is fit as fiddle. I should also become fit as fiddle. That becomes a stress in the body. So they will not eat. They will not do proper uh, thing. They will fight in their home. Gym jana hai, drugs lena hai, ye karna hai, wo karna hai. Uh, no, this is one problem. Next, if I see any fashion show. Okay, fashion show the the uh, what we say the models the models those who come on fashion show are they fat or slim? Slim. 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 Why there is no natural body on the uh, uh, ramp? That is the question. Okay, have you heard a song of Kendrick Lamar? Kendrick Lamar, how many of you know? एक ही बंदे को मालूम है ना rest of you will not know. Kendrick Lamar का humble गाना सुना है? वो humble गाने में बोलता है ना एक line. Okay, uh, as with the stretch marks. That is what hip hop culture is. Hip hop. Why you like some hip hop songs? Because they tell the truth. It they it hits you. Okay. So Kendrick Lamar is telling that uh, why the videos and the audios they are always showing a woman who is very slim and you know the skin is very smooth and you know something like that. They are predicting in a wrong way. So women they are doing in a wrong way. They sit in home. They look something videos and they go out on the street. They think they as if they are looking like that. And here, boys, they are they are going in a wrong direction. They think yes, that is the beauty. That is not the beauty. So we have lost our way. Okay, we have lost our way. So all why I am telling you this because you take Christianity, you take Islam, you take any religion in this world. Why this religion has come? They all have one manual with you with them. Hindu ne ek manual diya, Christianity ne ek manual diya, Is Islam ne ek manual diya. What is that manual? This holy book. What is that? Holy book. What is the holy book of Christianity? Bible. Bible. What is the holy book of Islam? Quran. What is the holy book of Hinduism? Bhagavad Gita. Now, what is there in that book? What is there in that book? That is the question. In that book, discipline is mentioned. The the most uh, you know the, the animals which will do mistake is we. Okay. Now, for example, a girl is a girl. We will have eyes on our friend's girlfriend. Okay, next, shadi ho gaya hai, but we will like a wife of another man. This is this is you know problem with the you know society. So now if you take Christianity, there you know there is a uh, settled sitter. You you know the wife of your uh, friend is your sister. Christianity me Bible me likha. How many of you have heard like this? Bible, Kendrick Lamar. So you can hear from the Christian people itself. I am not telling lie. Even I tried reading Christianity Bible. There are two books: Old Testaments and New Testaments. Okay, Old Testament and New Testament. You will get in hand New Testament, but you will not get Old Testament in your hand. Okay, you have seen some people distributing Bible free of cost. They will distribute New Testament, not the Old Testament. Because he is a warrior. Okay, he wins his battle. So like that. But if you can imagine a man of forty uh, years or forty fifty years old, so he will read and interpret in a different way. Imagine you are eighty years old and you read Bhagavad Gita, you will interpret in a different way. You will think that okay, Mahabharata yenna one line le yenna apne na sotu prachcha. Koi party jata, go and ask your grandfather, grandmother, they will say what is Mahabharata? Sotu prachcha. Go and ask the youngster, he will say what is Mahabharata? Motivational story. I will be Arjuna. In Indian army today we have battle tanks named after Bhishma and Arjuna. Why it is named after Bhishma and Arjuna? You should know all these things. What is Bhishma? MPT main battle tanks. Okay, all these things. So now here we have Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh. This is one wrong direction that the world is going. Now here there is a problem. 
can you tell me how many times in uh, the bhagavad gita is told or revealed to this world how many times bhagavad gita is revealed to this world do you understand the question revealed means sona patal kitne kitne baar bhagwan ne bhagavad gita ko bola hai ek hi baar ya do baar ya teen baar ya panch baar how many times yeah the answer is two times how many times two times the first time it was between the fight was between god and evil the fight was between god and evil in heaven and now the god gave but uh, the bhagavad gita into manu manu is a man and he heard this things from the god and he wrote a book called as manu smriti what is that smriti what is meant by smriti who is smriti irani smriti irani kitne log maro hai kyunki saas bhi kabhi bahut hi yes I have seen this woman at when I was in tenth, uh, very close. She came for a campaigning in Maharashtra. Okay, no, no, she is from BJP. Okay, Smriti Irani. Fine, forget about that. Recently, no confidence motion. Rahul Gandhi spoke. Do you understand? Yes. After Rahul Gandhi spoke, there was one lady who was counter attack. She told that for the first time in the history of India, the Congress Party they are thumping the table when Rahul Gandhi was talking bad about Mother India. so that lady is smriti ran okay so forget about it my question here it is what is the meaning of smriti smriti means some book or literature so manu smriti book written by manu is manu smriti today's government okay today's government what they are doing they are trying to take some uh, points from manu smriti and trying to make the society okay for example how many uh, classes we have do you know varna system yes. varna system means brahmin kshatriyas vaishyas and shudras what is that brahmin kshatriyas vaishyas and shudras so these are the four classes varna system okay now who started this varna system during vedic time remember during vedic literature time the indian class the indian society was divided into brahmanas kshatriyas vaishyas and shudras it was divided into this four categories okay Fine. So now each category will have different tasks. Brahmanas will have different tasks, something like that. My question is, who started this? Who gave the idea? Brahma gave, Vishnu gave, Shiva gave, and today this is the bone of contention. What is the meaning of bone of contention? It is just like this. You have written down. Bone of contention. Hmm. India and Pakistan. Kashmir is the bone of contention. What is the meaning? the reason to fight okay so listen to this the bone of contention in indian society today is this caste system do you all agree yes. caste system right so this is the problem now let us try to understand i tell you the story of uh, the shiva and all those things okay one day what happened the you know krishna and vishnu mahesh this story is i tell you one day here mother earth was facing trouble she don't know what to do so she goes to brahma the mother earth goes in the form of a cow goes in the form of a cow to brahma and says that dear brahma you are the creator on earth there is not a problem so can you save me so brahma says that i am little busy creating some other uh, people you directly go to vishnu you directly go to vishnu here so cow the mother earth says that okay i'll go here and when mother earth goes there in the name uh, in the form of a cow vishnu was sleeping okay so mother earth was waiting the cow was waiting and after some time vishnu woke up from his sleep and he saw mother earth is waiting there and he inquired what's the problem why you are here so mother earth uh, told the all uh, ordeal ordeal means some problems okay so now the vishnu he is telling the god is telling he started laughing smiling and he told that's it itna hi hai problem utna hi hai then she told yes yes itna hi hai then what vishnu did he plucked two hairs from his head so what is the meaning for example someone is plucking hair from his, the head that means the task is so simple okay for example if i ask you 2 plus 2 you tell 
four. So the task is so simple. You can easily, you know, tell the answer. But if I say integration of tan x to the power of four x, something like that, then it is difficult. So Vishnu felt the task which was given here by Mother Earth is very easy. So he plucked two hairs and put on Mother Earth. Okay, and he told that these two people will take care of your problem. So one hair was black in color and other hair was white in color. The black one is Krishna. The black one is Krishna, and the white one is Balaram. The white one is Balaram. Okay. So now these two people are going to come on this earth, and now they are going to, you know, create a uh, a story or any uh, something which has happened that you should take as a moral story. Now, now all, all this thing, thing there was a person, person called as Ved Vyas. Who is Who's that? that? Vyas. Vyas is a sage. In Hinduism, more than God, sage have power. The saints have power. Okay. So there is a person called as Vyas. One day he remembered a very beautiful story and he wanted to write this story in a book. But then he realized if he starts doing it, it will be very slow. So he was searching for someone who can write the story for him. So Ved Vyas is telling, I will search for someone. He goes to Brahman uh, and uh, Brahma says that, okay, you go to a person called as Ganesha. You go to a person that is Ganesha. Ganesha will do this for you. So Ved Vyas is telling, okay, I will go and approach him. So Ved Vyas is approaching Ganesha. So now Ganesha, the Lord, he says that, okay, I am ready to write the book for you. But one condition, when you are telling some slokas, when you are telling some stories, when Ved Vyas is telling some stories, you should not stop. You should not stammer. You should not stop or stammer. Then only I will write the story. Ved Vyas told, okay, I agree for this condition. But you also have to agree for one condition. What is that? Ved Vyas told to Ganesha, when you write, you have to understand and write. Blindly don't write. You have to understand and write. So Ganesha told, okay, no problem. So now what happened? There is a tree. And Ganesha sat here, Veda sat here, there is a book and now Ganesha started writing. So when he was writing, there was a river flowing behind this river and this river is Saraswati. This river is Saraswati. So now when he was writing, Veda was uh, speaking, Ganesha could not hear properly because the river was flowing. So what Ganesha requested this Saraswati Mata, that river, uh, I am writing a book. Can you just slow down your speed or can you just uh, stop your, that sound? So river Saraswati, the mother Saraswati, she told, okay, till you write, I will not disturb you. I will flow very silently. This river disappeared and started flowing underground. It started flowing underground. So this is one story of how the Saraswati river disappeared in Hindu mythology. You understand? Hindu mythology means something imagination. But today if you take geography, if you see the maps, okay, you can see some river disappeared from India. That is also one truth. So, maybe they will not ask in mythology or geography, but remember the story. Now the story started, now Veda is trying to tell the story. Now what happens here? There is a dynasty, Kuru dynasty, have you heard it? Okay, try to draw this uh, chart, then it will be easy for you to understand. Right now, Kuru dynasty, you have here Ganga, then you have Shantanu, then you have Satyavati, okay, next, you have Chitragana and then you have Vichitraviriyan,
submitted. Suppose if my daughter gets married, 
your father shantanu and my daughter they gave birth to a boy who will become the king you will become the king or the boy will become the king devavrata will become the king or the kid the uh, boy between shantanu and the lady here will become the king devavrata chances is more to devavrata so now fisherman that father is telling so what is the use my grandchildren will not get anything what is the use of my wife uh, my daughter getting married to your uh, your uh, father my grandsons will be left alone they will not get anything so they were thinking and he says that okay i promise that your grandchildren will become the rulers of the uh, kingdom so he was happy now the second doubt was remaining so now the second doubt was the fisherman that father is asking uh, you have promised it but suppose in future you get married to a lady and your father is also married to my daughter now here you have kids and you have kids you have promised it but in future if these two kids they fight with each other to become the ruler who will become the king okay so now there is a problem in the family so devavrata thinks and he says that okay so in order to avoid of this problem i will promise you that i will never get married so what devavrata did he promised that he will never get married so when he made this promise gods were watching from heaven and they were shocked to listen to this promise and they showered blessing and from that day the boy's name it changed from devavrata to bhishma okay from that day the boy's name changed to devavrata to bhishma and then shantanu married the woman or the queen that is satyavati you understand so satyavati was the fisherman's uh, daughter so they both get married now shantanu and satyavati they had two boys chitragada and vichitravilya okay so this guy he died in a battlefield and now here we have one guy who is not active he is not that active he is like little bit you know lazy he is not bothering about because you know bhishma he has promised he will never become the king so he knows that definitely who is the king now here vichitravilya so he was not bothered so now what happened once he was at the age of getting married Shantanu died. Satyavati died. Now, why this man is important? You will understand in the uh, the story which I will be telling you. So, everyone died. Now, this guy is remaining. Now, who is responsible for this boy to get married? Bhishma. He is responsible. Okay. So now, Bhishma takes the responsibility, and now he goes and tells Vijayendraviran there is a program called a Swayamvar. Those days, Swayamvar means imagine there is a queen. Okay. The men from other village or the nearby kingdom they will come they will have competition and the person who wins in that competition will be getting that girl that is called as swayamvar so bhishma goes and tells vichitra vidyan you have to go to the nearby kingdom and you have to get married there are three queens okay three beautiful uh, ladies there so which one you want you can get married and come back and you can lead your life vichitra vidyan says no i am i am not interested but now bhishma is confused he is bothered bothered, uh, bothered about his next generation So Bhishma says, instead of you, I will go. This old man is going now. He goes, he goes to that competition, and all are laughing. He is booed on, he is laughed on, but he says that I don't care, and he wins that swayamvar. And when he wins that swayamvar, three uh, ladies are coming, three queens are coming. One is Amba, second is Amba, Ambika, and third is Ambalika. Amba, Ambika, and Ambalika. Now Bhishma, he got confused. Now, suppose if we select Ambika, if the Chitra Vidyan says, "I don't want Ambika," what will happen? Again, he has to go for this fight. So, what Bhishma did, instead of avoiding this confusion, he took all these three in his chariot. He told, "I will take all these three and show it to the Chitra Vidyan and let him let him select." So, he took it. On the way, Amba Amba was trying to uh, tell Bhishma that, "Please don't take me to him because I am already in relation with some other guy. You leave." but he was not ready to listen so there was a fight going on and amba on the way she had a fight and she promised that i will take revenge on bhishma so the whole mahabharata the story which i am telling is in mahabharata the whole story uh, uh, mahabharata now amba is trying to take the revenge on bhishma this is on one side so now only two queens left ambika and ambalika bhishma is going to the palace which is revenge is coming ahead and now bhishma is telling see what i have brought for you Okay, so she he shows two queens, Ambika and Ambalika. So now, like, now for him it is like Cadbury Dairy Shorts. Karna lande dinga ase ya, lande lande. Right. So what happens? Which three women says I will marry both. 
What did I do? I will marry both. So now they get married. So Ambika and Ambalika now he, they are the wife of Vijayendra. So with Ambika they have a son called as Dhritarashtra, and with Ambalika they have a son called as Pandu. Have you heard Pandavas? Yes. So the kids of Pandus are called as Pandavas. The kids of Pandus are called as Pandavas. Okay. And now here Ambika has a son Dhritarashtra, and Dhritarashtra was married to a queen called as Gandhari, and Dhritarashtra was elder. But the problem here was Dhritarashtra was blind. He could not see properly. So the society, the people, you know, in the village, they were telling that he is not an able king. Pandu is better. So naturally, the kingship went to Pandu. Everything was going on fine. Pandu married Kunti. Pandi, uh, so, sorry, uh, Pandu married uh, Kunti. And uh, okay, here in Mahajanapadas, I have told you, you know, Mahajanapadas yesterday. Gosala, Samanti, Ayodhya, right? So here you have a story of Panjala, Panjali, you know, Panjala, Panjali like that. So here what happens, that is on Ramayana. The story comes from Ramayana. But here Pandu, he marries Kunti and he is living a happy life. So with Kunti, he has three sons, Yudhisthir, Bhima and Arjuna. This is the family tree. But there is one more guy missing, he is Karnan. Who is that? Karna is missing. Okay, now I will tell you the story and you are going to tell me how far it is true or how far it is fake. Look at this now. Everything was going on fine, but Pandu was always going on expedition for hunting in forest. So when he was hunting in forest, he fell in love with other lady. Her name is Madri. Her name is Madri. And he secretly married that Madri. And with Madri, Pandu has two sons, Nakula and Sahadi. So, Nakula Sahadev are the son of Madri and these three, Yudhishthir, Bhima and Arjuna, they are the son of Kunti. When the village, when this kingdom, the people they came to know that Pandu has secretly married, he has an, uh, another wife or something like that, disciplinary action was taken and now Bhishma, all these people, they came together and Pandu was punished. Pandu was told to leave this kingdom, go to forest along with his family along with his kids and you should never come back and who will become the king here? Dhritarashtra uh, will become the king and Dhritarashtra has sons like Duryodhan, Dushashan, okay like this so these are the kids of Dhritarashtra okay so now what happened Pandu was punished along with Kunti, Madri, all five children okay and Bhishma was visiting both of them look at this Bhishma was visiting both of them, Dhritarashtra also, Pandu also, kids also because he is uncle, right? So he is going to visit, bringing chocolates and everything, imagine. Okay, then one day Bhishma realized the mistake was of Pandu, it is not the mistake of the kids. So he goes and requests Dhritarashtra, dear Dhritarashtra, the mistake was done by Pandu, so what these kids have done? So you please allow these five kids to go for an education along with your kids. So, Duryodhan, Dushashan, they were all studying in a college or an education system. They were having, having a very good system. So, these five people were allowed to go for education. They were allowed for the education. Okay. So, Dhritarashtra told, okay, I don't have any objection. Let them come. So, they started studying together. The problem started here. You might have heard someone, uh, someone called as Dronacharya. Dronacharya. Who is this? Teacher of Pandavas. Teacher of Pandavas. Okay, now look at this. Acharya. Acharya means teacher. Acharya Institute of Technology. That means a college. Teaching. Okay. Kripa. Kripa Acharya means what? Who is the teacher here? Kripa. Okay, is a teacher. Next. Have you heard Parasuram? Parasuram. Huh. Okay, yeah. Palasi Raja is different. He is Kerala Palasi Raja is different. He is doing Tipu Sultan survey. Okay, this is Parasura. Look at this. So Acharya Acharya, they are our teachers. You should know the role played by each characters. In the end, what happens and why Vishnu sent Krishna and Balram and what is the problem? Okay, so this is the issue. So when there is an exercise, imagine bow and arrow or something like that, Arjun is shooting well. When there is wrestling, Bhima is winning it. So whenever any competition happens, all these people are waiting. So people in the society, they started uh, talking. There was a talk going on. After Dhritarashtra, who should become the king? 
Duryodhan should become the king. But what people were think, uh, talking, Arjuna will become the king. Bhima is the best wrestler. He is the most best. Something like that. So slowly what happened, the seed of poison, the seed of hatred was sown in the Duryodhan's mind. So now he is ready to take revenge. He wanted to eliminate these five brothers. He did a lot of attempts. Uh, making a wax statue, okay, so many things. Then he, you know, so many stories are there. Fine. What are the stories? That I am not going to tell. Now some interesting stories I will try to tell. So here there is a man called as Karna. This lady Kunti, she got a blessing from sun god. Okay, she got a blessing that uh, there is a sloka and if you tell this sloka you will give birth to a boy. And that boy will be very strong, a warrior, something like that. So Kunti was wondering, Ki, is it true? So Kunti decided to utter that verses, sloka and let us check. She uttered that verses, sloka and she got a boy. That boy is Karna. And to have believed that Karna was very strong, very able administrator, very strong compared to Duryodhan and all these people. But now, the problem is, if someone is asking Kunti, how Karna is your son, she has no answer. She has no answer. So, what she did, she, you know, orphaned this guy, Karna. Yeah, same, all the stories they will leave in river, uh, river and all these things, okay. So, now Karna was left, now Karna started coming up in ashrams, okay. Only Kunti knows who is this guy. Okay, only Kunti knows who is this person here. And uh, now both are, all of them are growing. Now this Karna, he started going to an ashram where Parasuram was a teacher. Parasuram was a teacher. I told you Brahmana, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas and Sudras. In this four caste system, who is more physically powerful? Kshatriyas. Physically who is strong? Kshatriyas. Do you all agree? So they can tolerate pain. Who is more intelligent? Brahmanas. Brahmanas. Okay, like that. So what happened? Karna was in Par uh, Parasuram ashram. So Parasuram, he accepted Karna thinking that he is a son of a Brahmin. So he was growing on, he, he, he learned all the techniques of uh, slokas and everything. And the uh, Guru, uh, you know, Guru Shishya Parampara, that means the Guru and te uh, teachers and students uh, relation, what happened? One fine afternoon, Parasuram was feeling sleepy. And he wanted to go to sleep, but there was no pillow. So Karna came and he told, no problem, you can sleep on my lap. So he sat and uh, Karna, this Parashram, he kept the head on his lap. And so when he was sleeping, suddenly there was one scorpion. Scorpion means tail in Tamil or bichu in Hindi. So one scorpion came and it bit the leg of Karna. Okay, what will happen if mosquito bites you? Yeah, what will happen? You will see the mosquito biting you and enjoy that pain or what you will do? You will try to hit or there will be some movement in your body, right? Okay, so in the same way, imagine a scorpion is coming and biting Karna, Karna did not move. Okay, so he had so much of strength, so he did not move and uh, the Parasuram, his sleep did not get disturbed. After some hours when Parasuram woke up, he saw there is full blood on the floor. So he was wondering from where this blood came. So now Karna, he told, when you were sleeping, there was one scorpion, it came and hit my leg, bit my leg and I didn't move. So he was very happy. But within seconds he realized, a Brahmana does not have that much strength. He started asking questions, who are you? Then he told the truth, I was orphaned, I don't know who I am. So Parasuram realized that, yes, you are a Kshatriya, you have betrayed me, go out of my ashram and he curses. Okay, and he curses. So Parasuram betrays Karna. So Karna comes out. Next, Karna was once hunting in a forest and one day, you know, he heard someone drinking water. So he saw, he thought there is a small deer which is drinking water. So he uh, shot one arrow in that direction and after the arrow pierced that animal, there was a loud sound of a boy. Then when he goes there, he realizes the boy was carrying his blind father and blind mother on, on a, like a balance kind of thing and he died. So now the blind father and blind mother, they curse this guy. They told that when you are in war, your chariot will fail. When you are in war, your chariot will fail. Second curse given. Everything was fine. And finally what happens? Now here there is war. Now, here there is a game played by Duryodhan and the Yudhisthira. Yudhisthira is also called the Dharmaputra. Dharmaputra, why? Because he will never tell lie. He will always go with righteousness. Okay, that means he will always 
abide with the law. So Yudhishthir was playing uh, the game of dice with Duryodhan, and Duryodhan, instead of he playing it, he was allowing Saguni to play it. You know that yes. Saguni. He was uh, Saguni to play. So now here the dice which was rolled, that dice was nothing but the bones of Saguni's father. You might have seen Saguni is uh, limping. He does not have leg properly. Why? Yeah. No. See, I'll tell you what. Saguni's father. Saguni's father. He was insulted by this family. Okay, this whole family. He was insulted by this family. So Saguni's father wanted to take revenge. So what did he? He trained his son, you know, to go to this school and be friends, friends with all these people. And one day when they grow up to take revenge, so the uh, Saguni's father was doing this. But one day Saguni came back and he told, uh, "They are my best friends, so I will not agree for your plan." So uh, Saguni's father got angry. He took stick and he started beating him. He beat him so bad, he you know that leg got fractured and he could not walk. Then Saguni realized, "Okay, this is the pain my father has." And after the father died, he took that bones of that you know fathers and he made that dice. And that dice, whatever Saguni thinks, that dice will listen. That is the story. So now what happens? The main picture here is Duryodhan want to defeat Yudhishthir because he wanted to become the king. The mind is poisoned by power. They, he want to take the power. So the game starts. In this game, Yudhishthir keeps losing. He gives the land. He gives the building. He gives everything. And at last, what? Who is left here? Only uh, no. Draupadi is left. Who is left here? Draupadi. So now what happens? Dra uh, Draupadi is a common wife for all these Pandavas. Now why it happens like this? I'll tell you. One day what happened? This Kunti they were in forest and Arjuna, you know, Arjuna brings uh, Kun, uh, this lady Draupadi and uh, tells a story that you know, mom, come out, see what I have for you. I have brought something for you. So in home what happens? Mother, mother's mentality is that to divide everything equally. Okay, so she told, okay, you distribute among your brothers equally. She didn't see that, who is that? She thought, Kunti thought it is some food items or something. But it was Draupadi. So once the word is uttered, they will not take back. So this is the situation. You understand? So Draupadi remains a common wife all with all these people here. So now what happens? Finally, Duryodhan wants to take revenge and his mind was so poisoned that he told, I want Draupadi also. Okay, and then there is an incident of pulling the sari, then Krishna is coming, okay, all the stories are there, fine. Now what happened? They are once again sent, all these Panchapandavas they lose, they are sent to forest to 13 years. The condition is 12 plus 1. 12 years you should be in forest, last one year you can come back and stay in village, but if you stay in village, no one should understand you are, no one should come to know that you are this Pandavas. If some villagers or someone come to know that you are Pandavas, you have to go and repeat this 13 years once again. Repeat this 13 years once again. So all these Pandavas, they go inside the forest and now uh, there is a lot of stories of Annapurna and all these things. Okay, now coming back. Okay, now after 12 years, what happens? They stay inside this uh, village and they are hiding. Last one year is remaining, one day is remaining and in that one day what happened? Arjuna now he gets angry. Arjuna wants to take revenge. The last one day in a forest, what happened? Arjuna hides himself inside behind a tree, and Duryodhan, Dushashan, Kripa Charya, Dona Charya, they are all you know going for hunting. Suddenly, don't know what happened. Someone uh, fired so many arrows. All these people were naked. The dress were only the dress were removed. Now Drona Charya, Kripa Charya, Duryodhan, they came to know Arjuna is back. Pandava is back. 13 years is completed. Now Duryodhan is getting more angry. Now there is a fight and they want the property. Who will become the king? Now, listening to these issues, the person from Dwarka, and in Dwarka, who is staying here? Krishna. Krishna is in Dwarka. He realizes that his aunt, son, and all relatives they are fighting, and he comes to this place, Hastinapur. There is a place called as Hastinapur. Hastinapur is a place of Pandavas and Guru Kshetra is a place of Kauravas. Uh, okay, like that. So uh, Krishna is going and he is asking, Kya ho gaya? Chalo, don't fight, he is trying to compromise. But Duryodhana is not ready. Finally, they decided to go for a fight. Krishna was sleeping and both.
Duryodhan went first. Arjuna is coming next, and they realize Krishna is sleeping. Okay, so they waited. Let Krishna open his eyes, then we'll see what happens. Krishna, after some time, he opened his eyes and he saw Duryodhana uh, Arjuna first. He saw Arjuna first, and then Duryodhana was here. Okay, and then what happens? Uh, Krishna gets up and he says that Arjuna, I see you first. So tell me what do you want? Duryodhana is getting angry. How come this is possible? I came first here. You should ask me first. So uh, Krishna is telling, okay, fine. Tumko kya chahiye? So two conditions. Krishna is giving two conditions. You want me on your side, or you want all my army on your side? So Duryodhana says that I want all your army on my side. And now Krishna looks at Arjuna and he says that, okay, Arjuna, what do you want? You want me on your side, or the whole army on your side? Arjuna says, I want only you on my side. Only, only Krishna on my side. That's now the things are decided. Now a decisive day comes. Battle is going to happen. Okay, battle is going to happen. Mother Kunti she realizes there is a problem. Now who is most powerful here? Pancha Pandavas or Kauravas? If you see now, Duryodhan had a best friend that is Karna. Duryodhan had a best friend Karna. Now we. The Mahabharat it portrays Duryodhan as a bad character. Yes, sir. Okay, Mahabharat it, it portrays Duryodhan as a person responsible for all this battle. Switch off the fan. Okay, so now what happened here? There are some good things that you have to learn. For example, Duryodhan had so much trust on his friend, he never doubted on his friend. For example, Duryodhan was once not in his palace. Okay, and Duryodhan's wife and Karnan they were in a room. And from inside the room, laughing sound, giggling sound, okay, that was coming out. And when Duryodhan came, the queen is running out, and Karnan is playing, catching his hand, her hand, and okay, like this. Now, if someone else is in her place, in his place, there will be definitely problem. But here it didn't happen like this. Duryodhan says, okay, he's my best friend. He didn't think about anything about it. Next, Duryodhan never doubted on Karnan that he may switch sides. He may go to Pandavas and all these things. He never doubted on his abilities. He never questioned it. Now the battle is going to start. On one side we have Duryodhan. On the other side we have Krishna. Now Duryodhan he decided my army chief will be Kripachar, Donacharya, Bhishma. You understand? So what happens here? Bhishma is taking the side of Duryodhan. Donacharya is taking the side of Duryodhan. Kripacharya, everyone is going to Duryodhan side and Krishna and Arjuna, they are on one side, small, okay, chota side. So now look at this. What I told you, what is the meaning of Acharya? Teacher. Acharya means teacher. teacher. What is their duty? Teacher. To teach. Okay. And what are the class system I told you? Brahmana, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas and Sudra. This is the class system, Varna system, okay, which is mentioned in Manusmriti. So now what happened? The battle started. Okay, and now the undecisive battle before the battle going to start, this lady Kunti is going and secretly meeting with Karna, and Karna was inside his uh, in his uh, camp, and Karna was shocked. You are the mother of Pandavas. Why are you coming and talking to me? So Kunti told, before I am mother of Pandavas, you are my first son. I am your mother first, and I was the one who threw you into a river. Karna was completely shocked and he felt very happy because in his life he got to meet, meet his mother. But now the mother has a different ambitions, different goal. Okay. So now the mother says, Kunti says, Karna, you have to make two promises. You have to remove that kavach and give it to me. And the second, when you are going to hit an arrow, maximum two arrows you will hit. If you are going to kill Arjuna in the battle, maximum how many arrows you should hit? Two arrows you should hit. Okay, and you should recall the curse is given by Parasuram and that old guy. Okay, Parasuram told you will forget all the things which I taught. That the, old, the blind parents they told that your charity will get stuck up. These are the two curse. And the third one, Kunti, she says, Give me your Suraksha Kavach, everything she is taken. So there is no protection, he may die if the arrow pierces. And the second promise Kunti is asking to Karna is that. You should shoot only two arrows. If first arrow you shoot, Arjuna misses, you can shoot the second arrow. Okay, like that. So this is the story. Now what happens, the battle is going to start. And uh, 
The father is in the trust to his blind man. Now he is crying. He thinks that what mistake I did? That today my children and Pandu's children are having a war, a holy war. So he has a person called as Sanjay. And in Mahabharat, there is a person Sanjay who has an extraordinary power to see what is happening on the battlefield. Okay, so he used to be in one place and he will say, okay, this is a thing happening and uh, Dhritarashtra was breaked up. So now, here we come across a story versus the dialogues between two guys, Krishna and Arjuna. The dialogues between Krishna and Arjuna is called as Bhagavad Gita. The story which I told you till now is a story of Mahabharata. The story which I am going to tell you now is Bhagavad Gita. Do you understand? In exam they will ask you, Mahabharata is a part of Bhagavad Gita or Bhagavad Gita is part of Mahabharata? Bhagavad Gita is a part of Mahabharata. So in Bhagavad Gita there are total 18 chapters. 18 chapters are divided into 6, 6 and 6. The first 6 chapters it talks about motivation. Arjuna is afraid. He is afraid to see his brothers Duryodhan, Dushashan, Bhishma, Pripacharya, Dronacharya, the teacher who taught archery, now he is going to face the same teacher. So Arjuna is afraid. Like this, the sixth chapter it is full of motivation. The next six chapters it is talking about the uh, meditation, connecting God. And the last six chapters it talks about message, the Varna system and all these things. We will see one by one. The first chapter, Dhritarashtra is talking to Sanjaya. He says that Dharma Kshetre, Kuru Kshetre, Samaveta, Yudhsva, Mamakaha Pandavas Cheva Kimapurvata Sanjaya. In Sanskrit, there is a first statement. Dhritarashtra is telling Dharma Kshetre, Kuru Kshetre. Kuru Kshetre is a place where the holy battle took place. Dharma, it's such a holy place. Dharma Kshetre, Kuru Kshetre, Samaveta, Yudhsva. My son and Pandavas son, they were Samam, they were equal. Okay. Mamakaha Pandavas Cheva Kimapurvata Sanjaya. What my sons and Pandavas sons did sin in their last generation, today they had a holy war. This is a war going on. Like this the thing started. Now, Arjuna is telling, Dear Krishna, take my chariot in center of the battlefield. I want to see who is going to face me. So Krishna says, okay, Krishna is a chariot. Arjuna is going and he is shocked. Okay, this guy is shocked. Arjuna is shocked to see Bhishma, Dronacharya, Kripachari, all his relatives. And now, Arjuna is telling, dear Arjuna, my palms are sweaty. The Gandhiva in my hand, the sword, that bow in my hand is slipping. I have some guilty feeling in my throat. I feel something nausea sensation. I am not well. I want to stop this war. It is better I give them everything. Okay, so Krishna says, listen, you are born to fight. Today if you don't fight, the whole generation, the whole, the next whole life, People will curse you that you did not fight against the righteousness. You are born to fight, your duty is to fight. So like this Krishna is trying to motivate it. So in the fourth chapter, there is a, a statement when the dialogue is going on. Krishna is asking, uh, Arjuna is asking, why this thing happened? Why in my family this thing happened? So Krishna says, it is because the women get polluted. It is because the women of the family get polluted. The women of the society got polluted. So, Arjuna is telling, okay, why do you say the women are getting polluted? Because they have wrong motives. They want powers, they want land, they want wealth. Okay, so for that reason, there will be problem. So, Arjuna is telling, this will happen millennium to millennium. Yuge, yuge, this will happen every time. So, will you come every time? So, Krishna is telling, yes. So, that's the reason. In I think you have heard this statement. Paritranaya sadhu naam, vinashaya druskita, dharma sanskha panarthaya, sambhavani yuge yuge. Yuge yuge means from millennium to millennium. Paritranaya sadhu naam, vinashaya druskita, vinash, vinash means to destroy. Whenever the society get destroys, I will come on this earth, yuge yuge, once again. So that time Arjuna is okay, satisfied. Then the fourth chapter mentions about one more statement, that is Krishna is telling Arjuna, you fight. Don't expect any fruits. You keep fighting, you will get the results. Okay, so you might have heard this also in your school. For motivation, they will say, Karmane vadi karaste, ma palishu kadachana, ma karma pala hetur buhu, tai sayo vasva karmani. Karma means duty. What is that? Karma means duty. But here, one thing you remember, in school and colleges, or even in YouTube, I have seen YouTube in all other places, this 
sloka is told for motivation. Karmani vadi karasar parana sehi. Sorry. Karmani sehi parana idhar paaka da apni na. But here this is taken from Bhagavad Gita. But that is wrong. Many they have misconception. Karma in Bhagavad Gita is different. What is that karma? We will see now slowly in within five ten minutes. Okay. So now the war goes on, and now Krishna is uh, Arjuna is confused. Slowly we will move on to chapter eight, chapter ten, and now Arjuna says, "I will fight, but I want to talk to God. What can I do?" Krishna says, "You have to do meditation." So how to do meditation? So Krishna says, "Sit straight, spinal cord straight." Your hand should be like this. Fingers. Have you seen meditation will be done like this? Okay. Why it is like this? Why it is not like this? Or Spider Man or something like that? You will do always meditation like this. Okay. Close your eyes. Not completely. Half eyes closed. And you should see your tip of the nose. Okay. Tip of the nose and breathe in, breathe out, and try to connect to God. This is how you have to do meditation. Now, why I have to do like this? This thumb is coming from my body. Coming from my Body. This is called as Atma. What is this? Atma. And this I connect to God. This is Paramatma. When I connect Atma and Paramatma, do you understand? And these three fingers. What is the meaning of these three fingers? Look at this. We have uh, Raja Yoga, Tama Yoga, and Sattva Yoga. There are three characters in you. Imagine you are sitting in this classroom. In front of me, as a teacher, you are very obedient, very silent. But if you go home. Your mother will realize. Your mother will tell. In the ponna, you know, you know, in the payana, this boy, no, no, sir, he is very naughty. They will complain. Imagine your father and mother told that, dear son, dear daughter, for next one week we are out of station. Take this money, whatever you want, you eat. We are going. What will happen? What will happen in your home? Yes, your real character will come out. The moment father is going from home, mother went from home, car, bike, bus, bike. Switch, close the door, music on, dance, shout, call your friends, do whatever you want. That is one character. So everyone has one character. You will get angry, okay? Not in classroom, while playing in ground or maybe something like that. So all these characters, Raja Yoga, Tama Yoga, Sattva Yoga, all these you characters, I am going to surrender to God. That is how I do meditation. So this is the meditation technique told in which religion? Which religion? Which religion? Hinduism. Hinduism. Hinduism came first or Buddhism came first? Hinduism. Hinduism came first. Now Buddha also did meditation. Buddha did meditation like this. Who was the teacher of Buddha? Who was the teacher? Teacher. Alara Karma. So what do you understand? Look, look here. Buddha has taken the idea of Buddha has taken the idea of meditation from which religion? Hinduism. So this is the base. Okay, this is the base, and now there is one thing. The last, you know, the battle goes on. Look at this. The battle goes on, and uh, finally, Karna is facing Arjuna. Karna is facing Arjuna. Karna don't know that Arjuna is his brother. Arjuna don't know Karna is brother, but Krishna knows everything. Krishna knows everything because he knows who is Bhishma. He is the one who created. Vishnu is sending these two guys here. So Krishna is doing all these games. Okay. So now what happened? Karna is face to face with Arjun, and now Karna is taking first arrow, and he is shooting to, uh, towards Arjuna. The arrow is coming very straight. Okay, now Arjuna is dead because that arrow is going to shoot his neck. The neck is going to be cut off. That is the angle which he has shot. But now Krishna is the charioteer. What Krishna does? He, with the help of the thumb, the toe, he try to press this chariot, and the chariot goes one inch down. As the chariot went one inch down, Arjuna. He was aiming. He just bent one inch, and the arrow came and hit his uh, that throat, that uh, cap. Okay, and uh, Arjuna fell down in his chariot. And now Arjuna got up and he told Krishna, "Thank you." He missed his target. Okay. See now what I do. Now what happens? The moment Arjuna is taking another arrow, now Karna he was uh, running his chariot. The chariot got stuck up inside the uh, mud. Because the curse given by the blind blind parents, it started working there in the battlefield. The uh, chariot got stuck up. Now Karna fell down. He is trying to lift that chariot so that he can run and attack Arjuna. Now arrow cannot be used. Now you know Karna is confused. Now Krishna is telling, 
wait for a minute, he will get tired, that time you show him. So Karna is trying to lift his chariot, he got tired and he was just bending down. Suddenly Krishna is telling, now you shoot, he will die. Now Krishna, Arjuna is taking aim and he is shooting and he killed Karna. He killed Karna. Do you understand? So who killed Karna? <laughs> brother killed the eldest brother. Okay. Now why, what happened here? Karna agreed that I will give the, uh, the safety thing, I will give the arrow. But dear mother, I have one condition for you. Suppose if I die in the battlefield, you should come and cry on my corpse. You should come and cry on my dead body. And you should say loudly that my son has died. You should say loudly, cry loudly what? My son is dying. So now Karna is dead. Now the news spreads to Kunti and she is running. She is running and trying to search where is Karna. She comes and she discovers Karna is dead. And now Kunti starts crying loudly. And she starts telling, my son is dead, my son is dead. Okay, something like this. So when the battle is going on, when Kunti is shouting like this, Yudhishthira heard, Bhima is hearing, Arjuna is hearing, all are hearing that mother is crying. So Yudhishthira thought Bhima is dead. Bhima thought Arjuna is dead. Everyone started coming towards that place where they can hear that cry. So when they came, all the three are alive. Dharma, Bhima, Arjuna, all three are alive. But mother is crying on Karna. So Dharma Putra, uh, Yudhishthira got angry. Mom, what are you doing? You are crying on a dead body or corpse of an enemy. Karna is our enemy. He is a member of Duryodhan party. Why you are doing like this? So that time Kunti told. Okay, Kunti told. I have one secret for you all. Karna was, was my first child. And you you guys killed Karna. Now Yudhishthira, I told you, he is a law protector. He will always tell truth. He got angry. And he told. Okay, mom, you have hidden the secret. From today, I curse all the women in this world. You can never keep any secrets. What is that? Is it true or false? Do you agree or disagree? Okay, now tell me. Do you, is it true or false? Okay. You this is on Dharmaputra. Okay, now he is cursing his own mother. Ki, women cannot keep the secret for a long time. This is a scripture, Mahabharata, written how many years back? 2000 to 3000 years back. Still, many interesting questions are there. Just try to listen to it, then you will come to know. So, this is one thing. And then finally, Krishna is telling Arjuna, uh, Dear Arjuna, you know, all this problem happened in your family. You know who is responsible? Arjuna is telling who? It's me. Krishna is telling it's me. Arjuna is shocked. Why you did like this? So, Krishna told, I wanted to teach lesson for all these humans on this planet because I have created a class system Brahmanas, Satriyas, Vaishyas and Shudras. So Krishna is telling, I am the one who created this class system. I created Brahmanas, I created Shudras, I created Vaishyas and I created Shudras. Do you understand? So like this it is told in Bhagavad Gita chapter number 18. And he is telling, what is the duty of Brahman to teach, duty of Kshatriya to fight, duty of uh, Vaishyas to go and manage the business and Shudras should help all these members. And this is already told in Manusmriti. Manusmriti is written by Manu. This is what it is. You understand? So all the battle gets over. Okay, and finally, uh, you know, uh, everyone is going in different places. Now Bhishma is dead. Dronacharya is dead. Now, now try to answer this question. What is the duty of Dronacharya? He is a Brahman to teach. But what he did? He played a role of a warrior. He wanted to be a Kshatriya. That's why Krishna is telling you are punished. What is the duty of Pripacharya? So teach. He is also going for a war. So Krishna is telling, whenever there is class system fighting, whenever Kshatriya wants to become Brahmanas, whenever Brahmana wants to become a Kshatriya, there will be fight in the classes and that is the time when there will be problem in the society. That is the time when I will come on this planet and I will try to save all these people. Yuge, Yuge. Okay. All these things are going on. So this is on one side and after that, uh, all the Pandavas, Duryodhan, Dushasana, they all get uh, heaven. Okay. And uh, finally, Krishna was sleeping inside a forest and the Vishnu, he had given a boon telling that nobody can kill Krishna unless and until someone hits an arrow in on his feet. So Krishna, after all this battle got over, he was sleeping uh, and uh, someone shot an arrow and he died. On his feet, when he was sleeping, he died. Next, 
There is one more interesting poem uh, or a story here in uh, this uh, uh, religion that is uh, Mahabharata. That is uh, Madhyam Kulam Vinashakam. Madhyam means alcohol. Madhyam means what? Kulam means family. Vinashakam. Vinash means to destroy. Alcohol will destroy the whole family. Yadavas, Kauravas, Pandavas. Yadavas were the member of Krishna. Okay, so they were they were the member of Krishna uh, battalion here. Imagine. So they were all drinking after the party. I uh, know after the war got over, they were all drinking, smoking, everything. And suddenly, what happened? At night, one guy in drunken state he told, "I saw you cheating." One man was not having sword. You purposely kill him. Now he got angry. How dare you say that? His words become bad words. Bad words become fist fight, and the fist fight becomes the whole blown war. And all the other ones they died. Okay, so Krishna was left with no man here. And he, Krishna also died. So this is the end of this story. Now here there are, there are many other uh, moral stories. For example, Dronacharya Gripacharya. Okay, here there is a statement in this Gita that is Vidya Vinaya Sampatre Brahmane Gavi Hastini Pandit uh, Pandita Shuni Chayva Shopakecha Pandita Samadarshina. Vidya, what is Vidya? Education. Vidya Vinaya Sampatre, Brahmane Kavi Hastini, Brahmane, what is the duty of Brahman? To teach equally. Pandita ha, okay, Pandit means to teach. Shuni Chaiva Shopakecha, whether it is an elephant or a dog, the Brahman he should teach equally. But what Dronacharya did, he did partiality with Eklavya and Arjuna. Okay, now, how many of you don't know Eklavya? Come trace properly, I'll tell you what is the problem. So how many of you don't know the story of Eklavya? You know the story of Eklavya? Raise your hand, raise your hand. I, I, I want to prove something. Uh, you know Sai Lakshmi? That's what I am telling you. I am not going to scold you. I want to prove something. What is the problem in Indian society? Okay. You know Eklavya? You know Eklavya? What, what is it? Sir, he was another student of Dronacharya and Dronacharya demanded his stuff. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Now, raise your hand properly once again. Those who don't know Eklavya, straight, straight. Okay, now the whole class, look at the majority people and tell whether they are North Indians or South Indians. Majority I want. Yeah, South Indian or North Indian? What? Tell me, hands down. They are all from South. That is the problem. We are Hindus. We pray to the same God. The most magnificent and the beautiful temple is in South. Okay. But we don't know the things here. Here in South, there is no communalism. Hindu Muslim, they don't fight in Tamil Nadu. Have you seen it? Okay. There will be there will be some misconception, something with distance they will make, but they will not go and kill Muslims and Muslims will not kill Hindus. Okay. But in North, if you see, there is not much big, a beautiful temple. All this story, Kurukshetra happened in North. Correct? Here in South, there is no impact. But still, we believe in Krishna and Arjuna and all these things. South Indians, they don't know who is Eglavya. Probably the family members, your grandmother or your mother didn't taught you. So, blame goes on them. Parents, they come and tell, my, she is my daughter, he is my son, make him officer. 18 years he was with you. What you did? Did you teach anything? Simply going to school, coming back from school, doing the homework. That is what education parents think. That is not education. This is education. Enna teriyo, eklave teriyo, teriyo sir. Dronacharya teriyo, teriyo sir. You know Ismail, a story. Uh, Prophet Muhammad's son. You know him, teriyo sir. Bakri, you know that. Why Bakri is celebrated, teriyo sir. That is power. That is knowledge. Do you understand? So Eklave is a boy who was uh, trying to, uh, he, he was a ma boy in a forest, he wanted to be a student of Dronacharya, so Dronacharya disagreed, he told that Eklave I cannot teach you, so Eklave told okay no problem, he started making a statue of his teacher Dronacharya, a, a statue of mud and he started learning archery by himself, okay, so one day what happened, Dronacharya along with Arjuna he was practicing in a one side of forest, suddenly there was one dog, which came in front of Dronacharya and that dog mouth was full of arrows and the dog was not bleeding. Suddenly Dronacharya had a doubt, who is this archer, the person who hit the arch uh, the arrow inside the dog's mouth, who has such, such a challenge? He, he is the contender, contender to Arjuna. He is the challenger to Arjuna. Arjuna. We, I have to stop it. He has a self-motive goal, self-fish goal. 
So Dronacharya came in search of that boy and that boy was Eklavya. Eklavya was happy to see Dronacharya in his camp and uh, Eklavya touched his feet and Eklavya told, what do you want my teacher? Okay, what do you want? I'll give you anything you want. So Dronacharya told, give me your right thumb. Give me your right thumb. So if thumb is gone, can you use bows and arrow? Why Dronacharya did like this? So was he a Brahmin a partial or impartial? To make this moral story understand, there is a uh, statement, Vidya uh, Ganesha Sampatre, Brahmani Gavya Sini, like that. Do you understand? So, this is at the age of 14 or 15, I believe that all the children should be taught Christ, uh, Bible, Quran, and Bhagavad Gita. They will not do mistakes in future. Why there is rape and why there is uh, you know so many bad things going on in society? Because we are not taught this. At the age of 50 and 60, they will say, Come up and grow them. 50-60 में यन्नता काम हो यन्नता करो तो मेरे दुमेर का करेक्ट 50 के महल मूड़े वाला तो लेडीज़ से ओके मैंने को मूड़ बंदा नहीं यूज़ किया करेक्ट सो व्हाट इस यूज़ ऑफ़ लर्निंग अगर गीता ड्रामा एंड बाबरन एंड देखो 60 बस फॉर अ प्लेशर अ मेंटल प्रेशर ओके लाइक दैट ओके नेक्स्ट यू हैव मनी माय माँ मनो मधुपो मेघो मध्यपो मरु मक्षिका मधुकुणो मत्सिया इतर दशा चंचला। तो देर आर टेन मर्स माँ मनो मधुपो मेघो मत्सियो मरु मक्षिका इतर दशा चंचला। माँ मिस मदर। These ten things cannot be stable in any in the whole life. You imagine your mother. You are sitting in this classroom and she will be thinking, ये मैं ये साफ़ टाना। Okay, my my daughter did she had food? Did she had lunch? Now imagine you go home, okay, the moment you enter home, the sound will take, eat food, eat food, eat food, okay, you are eating food. After some time, do this, do that, do, you will get fed up. Mommy, what is this? Correct. Mom will never be at stable. Next, Mano, your mind. You are sitting in this classroom, but the mind is somewhere else. It is going in your village, coming back here, again going to Madrimal, okay, all these places, Metro. Tomorrow is Sunday, what is the plan tomorrow? Chicken, mutton or okay, something like that. But mind can never be stable. Then, Madhupo, have you ever seen a person who is drunk in attention position? Can you do attention? Sadhan, he cannot do. That is the power of Madhupo. Next, clouds. Okay, clouds. Clouds cannot be in one place. Okay, Ma, Mano, Madhupo, fish. Okay, Mego, Maru. Like this, crocodile. So this is what the things are doing it. Fine. So we have successfully understood what is the characters. Now, Mahabharata, inside Mahabharata, there is a dialogue between two persons, Krishna and Arjuna. That is called as what? Bhagavad Gita. Now, if I ask you a question, which is the holy book of Hindu religion? People say Bhagavad Gita. According to me, it's wrong because the Western people, the British who ruled India, they read many books. They read Ramayana, they read Mahabharata, they read Upanishad, they did everything. They understood one book, that is Bhagavad Gita. So whichever book they understand, they told, ha, it is beautiful. Now you tell me, how many of your home, Hindu students here, how many of your home, you have Bhagavad Gita in front of your God? Ramayana in front of your God? Mahabharata in front of your God? No. But if you go and check in Islam home, Quran will be there. You go and check in your Christian home, there will be Bible. Sunday they go to church with the help, they take the Bible, they touch it, then they go. This is what Hinduism is. Veliye matta sartho. Veliye road mein aisa avaj karna hai na, hey Hindu, Muslim, aisa aisa. Do you know anything about Hinduism? You don't. Let me see one more question. Have you seen Kali, Durga, Virushya's God? How she looks? How she looks? Aggressive. Just, okay, aggressive, but how? How are her eyes, hands, tongue? Tell me that. Red tongue. Tongue is in or tongue is out? Out. Out. Why? Okay, tongue is out. Next, eyes. Closing or uh, bulging? Bulging. Okay, fine. So, why she is in angry mode? Okay, look at this. There were two devils, Chanda and Manda. Manda Kini. You know Manda Kini? Okay, Chandra Lekha, all these are uh, names of goddess. Okay, I Grini Nandini, Nandita Medini, Vishma Viropini. Okay, so there are, yeah, Nanda Nuti, that is one song. Huh? So these are all the names of Durga or Kali. Look at this. Chanda and Manda, there are two devils. Okay, 
After this story, your thinking on Kali and Durga will change, and you will laugh when you go to a village. And or the next time when some woman says that, "Na Kali under kya hai abhi?" Okay, so look at this. Na Amman under kya hai abhi? Na that thing will change. Chanda and Manda, they were two devils, and they were destroying many villages. Okay, so now the village people they went to God. So Shiva. Now this is all the praise of Vishnu. Vishnu stories over Krishna. Okay. Now on this other side you have Mahesh and Parvati. Parvati is nothing but uh, yeah. So what happens? The people they go to Shiva. They say that Shiva, you have Trishul. You are you can only kill Chanda and Manda. But Shiva was meditation. He was doing meditation. He was deep inside his meditation. And you know what happens if Shiva gets angry? His third eye will open and he will destroy more. More than Chanda and Manda, the whole village will destroy. Imagine nuclear bomb, Hiroshima, Nagasaki. Okay, like that. So what happens here? Now the villagers they turn to other gods. Now other gods they told there is only one person who can solve kill this Chanda and Manda. It is Parvati. So they go and they say request Parvati. As long as Shiva is trying to do meditation, you go and attack this Chanda and Manda. So Parvati she came down in the form of Kali with. Uh, hands, many hands, you know, with something like that. She came down and she started descending on a mountain top. Okay, she started descending on a mountain top, and from here she gave challenge to Chanda. She told Chanda, "Come here. If you have guts, you fight with me." Okay, and so uh, Chanda got angry. Now the challenge here it is: suppose if I kill Chanda, if one drop of blood falls on Earth, one more Chanda will come. That is the challenge. Okay, so now what happened? Chanda is going. There is a fight, and this Kali she successfully killing Chanda. Next, what happens? Manda he realizes Chanda went, but he didn't come. So Manda is also going. So again, once again, Manda is been killed, and Manda is now beheaded. उसको क्या करते हैं? Beheaded. Kali is cutting his head. So when head is cut, what will fall down? Blood. I told you one condition: if the blood fall down on the earth, who will come again? Chanda Manda they will be born again. So in order to stop that blood falling from the ground, Kali is taking a bow. So you can see on a hand there is a head. On the other hand down there is a bow. Okay. And on the other hand there is sword. And Kali is dancing. Now she is so happy. She is dancing. She the dance is so vigorous. Okay. She is dancing in that village. And now villagers are more concerned. So when the Kali Mata is dancing, she is destroying the village once again. Now who will control the god? Devil is killed, but who will control the god? So now all the villagers are confused. They go to God once again. By that time, Shiva has completed his meditation. Now all the gods they request, you are the only one who can stop your wife. Okay. So Shiva says, okay, fine, I will do it. So Shiva comes and he is trying to control, but Kali is closing her eyes and she is dancing. Suddenly, what happened? Shiva he lies down on the ground. Shiva is Sleeping on the ground, and Kali she is thumping her, you know, leg and here this and that. She lightly opened her eyes, and her legs was about to go and fall on Shiva. That means about Shiva was about to be killed. So can a wife kill husband? Can a wife kill husband? No. So Kali she realizes her mistake, and she is putting the tongue out. Have you ever?